All right. Welcome back. Um, so I teased earlier today, although by the time this is posted, that'll be yesterday, uh, that I'm excited. Um, so that was in a community post. I'm excited. I'm giddy. Uh, so way back in prehistory, meaning right before Christmas 2022, we had this lawsuit filed, Schofield versus Guillard. And it it was the um, University of Idaho history professor, the chair of the history department, sued a TikTok psychic who accused her of being the University of Idaho murderer. So, yeah. I thought, you know, hey, that looks like it's going to be a train wreck of a case. Um, so I got very excited about it. Clearly, not as many of you are as excited about it as I am. But you should be. And you'll see why shortly. So, unfortunately, I, I thought it was a dead case. Um, so... I, I think I've made two videos about it so far. This is the third. So we discussed the complaint, which details the lunacy. And, and then mid-January, we, we discussed the default. The um, plaintiff, uh, Ms. Schofield, Professor Schofield, sorry, put in a motion for default judgment because there was no answer. And so on the 27th of January, I didn't even bother making a video on this because it was just the clerk made an entry on the docket saying, yeah, it's in default, but there hasn't been a default judgment yet. The judge hasn't ruled. But I thought it was a dead case. I, I thought we'd just get a default judgment and go on about our business. But no. I didn't see this coming. I don't think a psychic saw this coming, except maybe a certain TikTok psychic. She responded. She responded today. See if you can see. I... I mean, it, it's going to be obvious, but see if you can see exactly why I'm so excited. It's not just because the case is going to most likely continue. Let, let's jump into it. So we have filed today, February 16th, in Rebecca Schofield versus Ashley Guillard. Defendant's motion for relief from a judgment or order pursuant to Federal Rule of Civil Procedure 60B. 60B being, well, Rule 60, relief from a judgment or order. 60B lays out the grounds for relief from a final judgment, order, or proceeding. On motion and just terms, the court may relieve a party or its legal representative from a final judgment, order, or proceeding for the following reasons. Well, there's six reasons. We'll see which ones she thinks are relevant. I think number three, fraud, is one, one of the reasons she's giving. It's ridiculous, but I think it is. So, so let's jump into it. Let, we'll zoom past her personal information. Uh, she is appearing pro se. That's one of the reasons to be excited. Now, before the court is respondent, Ashley Guillard's motion to reopen Rebecca Schofield versus Ashley Guillard, granting her relief from default order and judgment pursuant to Federal Rule of Civil Procedure 6B1 and or 60B1 and 60B3. 
The grounds for this motion are set forth more fully in the attached memorandum incorporated by reference herein. Dated, ooh, Valentine's Day 2023. Respectfully submitted, Ashley Guillard. With a certificate of service. So, that was 60B1 and B3. B1 is mistake, inadvertence, surprise, or excusable neglect. She's hinging it on excusable neglect. And then fraud, like I said. Well, fraud, misrepresentation, or misconduct by an opposing party. So let's jump into the motion. Motion for relief of from a judgment or order, Federal Rule of Civil Procedure 60B. Now before the court is respondent Ashley Guillard's motion to reopen Rebecca Schofield versus Ashley Guillard, civil action, blah, 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 granting her relief from default order and judgment pursuant to Federal Rule of Civil Procedure 60B. Rebecca Schofield versus Ashley Guillard is a civil action that defendant Ashley Guillard is in default of. Clerk's entry of default was entered on January 23rd, 2023. Ashley Guillard failed to plead or otherwise defend said action within the 21-day period as provided in Federal Rule of Civil Procedure Rule 12 due to excusable neglect and fraud or misconduct by opposing parties. Hmm. Ashley Guillard petitions for an extension of time to respond to the action pursuant to Federal Rule of Civil Procedure Rule 60B1 and Rule 60B3. Ashley Guillard included the motions, answer, and counterclaim with the filing of this with the filing of this motion less than 30 days after the 21-day period within a reasonable time pursuant to Federal Rule of Civil Procedure 60C1. Let's see what 60C1 says. It's the timing and effect of a motion to reconsider, basically. Uh, timing. A motion under Rule 60B must be made within a reasonable time, and for reasons 1, 2, and 3, no more than a year after the entry of the judgment or order or the date of the proceeding. So, it's definitely less than a year. The question is, was there fraud or excusable neglect? The fact. Excusable neglect is grounds for relief from a final judgment, order, or proceedings if granted by the court pursuant to Federal Rule of Civil Procedure Rule 60B1. Ashley Guillard did not respond timely to civil action, uh, blah, 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 due to being overwhelmed with multiple civil actions and responsibilities. Are there more than one? This is the only lawsuit I'm aware of. I'll have to look into that. Hmm. But she's overwhelmed. The civil action was filed December 21st, 2022. During that time, Ashley Guillard already had a civil action pending in county civil court in Harris County, Texas. Do we know who the plaintiff is in that? That's probably why I didn't see it, because I'm not a Texas attorney. I'm a Utah attorney. Um, and... I was searching federal courts. Ashley Guillard represented herself, pro se, solely conducted research, solely gathered evidence, 
and solely prepared for both trials. In that process, she made mistakes while learning how to prepare the answer, counterclaims, and motions. After nearly 40 pages of an answer and counterclaim, Ashley Giard had to redo it correctly. What I fail to see here is why she didn't answer this case. I, I mean, so I didn't play any of the TikToks in my previous videos because they're obnoxious. If you haven't seen them, I recommend watching either Moist Critical, Penguin Zero, Charlie, he did it, um, or a Tozy. Th those are the two main places I saw them. Um, she clearly knew she was being sued. She She's on video saying she's been served, saying she's had multiple cease and desists from Professor Schofield. It, it when she was served, she was told it, it's on the summons. You have 21 days from today's date to respond. But she was two months late, but it's because she had something in Texas, apparently. That that doesn't sound like excusable neglect to me. That's irrelevant because, I mean, yeah, excusable neglect is the standard. Spoiler alert, the judge absolutely is going to keep the case going. It, we're not getting a default judgment. I have thoughts, but we'll save that for later. Ashley Giard was overwhelmed with family obligations. Ashley Giard is the custodial parent responsible for physically caring for her child while his dad is on military orders. Ashley Giard was the local next of kin for a family member who was in the hospital intensive care on life support. I'm very sorry to hear that. Ashley Giard chose to support her family member during that time because there was no other family member to help. Additionally, Ashley Giard feared for her and her family's safety due to multiple attempts by someone trying to illegally enter her apartment with a Houston police incident number. It goes without saying, don't contact her. Don't don't mess with her. Don't, you know, we're we're at a zoo. Don't feed the animals. Don't don't contact Giard. Don't contact Professor Schofield. Just la point and laugh from afar. Fraud is grounds for relief from a final judgment, order, or proceedings. If granted by the court pursuant to Federal Rule of Civil Procedure Rule 60B3, attorney Wendy J. Olson and Rebecca Schofield made false statements about Ashley Giard in a press release that was disseminated worldwide and to most of the major news outlets across America beginning late December 2022 and continuing into February 2023 with the intent to humiliate, embarrass, harass, and intimidate her for Rebecca Schofield's benefit. I mean, I mean, that's just laughable. That, that's laughable. She's the victim. She's the victim. <laughs> the false statements about Ashley Giard influenced further harassment and cyberbullying by the thousands on Ashley Giard's social media channels. Hateful messages to her emails, phones, and website, and death threats from strangers. Like I said, don't email her. Don't telephone her. Don't, certainly don't give death threats. You're a jackass if you leave death threats. This caused Ashley Giard emotional distress stress, 
and impeded her ability to work on the civil actions she had pending efficiently. There's, there's someone who could have helped you with that. They're, they're called lawyers. Lawyers. It, it's our job to handle that stress for you. But I guess you, you don't want to be on the hook paying for your lawyer in addition to eventually paying for Wendy Olson, Rebecca Schofield's lawyers. January 19th, 2023, attorney Wendy Olson filed a motion for entry of default on behalf of plaintiff Rebecca Schofield, requesting responses from Ashley Guillard due by February 9th, 2023. Attorney Wendy Olson did not serve Ashley Guillard a copy of this motion. Ashley Guillard does not have a copy of this motion and is unaware of the contents of this motion. Ashley Guillard was made aware of this motion by a staff member of the court in a phone call she made to the United States District Court for the District of Idaho on February 10th, 2023. I, I noticed looking at the what was titled a motion for entry of default there was no certificate of service. I don't know what's going on there, but just the same. Just the same. You had 21 days to file an answer. You didn't do it. You didn't do it. You're in default. But like I said, the judge is going to well, there there is no default judgment, so it's just a clerk's entry of default. They're going to open it back up. We're going to have the whole show. Ashley Guillard battles with combat-related post-traumatic stress disorder, which limits her ability to work and finish tasks when she's under an increased amount of stress lawyer. Her stress increased due to the increased amount of responsibility, being defamed in nationwide news media, the hateful messages and comments towards her, harassment, and the threats of violence. It all collectively di diminished her ability to efficiently handle all the responsibilities. Evidence for docket number 119 blah 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 was submitted too late. Ashley Guillard had to cease support for her family in the hospital. Her son's birthday celebration was postponed, and her response to the civil action is late. Going forward, Ashley Guillard will prioritize court rules, orders, and actions and file timely actions. A default judgment for the plaintiff will cause prejudice to the non-moving party defendant Ashley Guillard for multiple reasons to include that the action was filed in the improper venue and by nature impedes upon the interest of justice pursuant to 28 U.S.C. 1404. Ashley Guillard is a resident of Texas and the events giving rise to the claims of defamation took place on Ashley Guillard's social media pages. But here, here's the problem. So. For those of you who, that's most of my audience, who have been following the Delete Laws saga, you'll say, why is it that this case, the defendant is a Texas resident, but the case is in Idaho, and it's probably going to stay in Idaho. So why is it that Delete Laws is rightly ridiculed for claiming, well, I can file in California. The difference here is the only Texas ba basis here, the, the only connection to Texas is the defendant. All of the actual evidence is in Idaho. It's the crime, 
the murders happened in Idaho. The witnesses about the murders are in Idaho. The police investigating are in Idaho. She, the defendant, Ashley Giard, reached out to the Idaho police, the Moscow police, saying, hey, I've got information for you. Whereas Kate being sued by delete laws, from what we've seen, the sum total of her contacts to California are contacting Scott Condon to interview, or David Condon to interview him. I don't know why I keep saying Scott Condon, but David Condon, and doing public records requests. The public records requests that it's easy enough to take judicial notice of that. And the vast majority happened in Massachusetts or Ohio or, you know, Denver, pretty much anywhere but California. So, yeah, I'm going out on a limb here. This one's staying in Idaho. Prayer for relief. For these reasons, Ashley Giard respectfully requested that the court grant this motion and the relief requested, relieve the entry of default, and allow defendant Ashley Giard to defend motion and plead civil action, blah, 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 um, Schofield versus Giard. Date of signing, Valentine's Day, signature, a a Ashley Giard, certificate of service, blah, blah, blah. So, I'm trying to avoid showing her uh, personal information there. So, and then we have here another thing she filed today, look, looking at the docket. That was relief. And then this next one is miscellaneous relief. Oh. And in, in, in the caption on this one, we have Rebecca Schofield, plaintiff, versus Ashley Giard, defendant. Here we have Rebecca Schofield, plaintiff, versus Ashley Giard, defendant, and Ashley Giard, counterclaim plaintiff, versus Rebecca Schofield and Wendy J. Olson, Elijah M. Watkins, and Corey Carone of Stoll Reeves as counterclaim defendants. And motion for defendant slash counterclaim plaintiff Ashley Giard to be granted CM ECF e-file access pursuant to district local rule civil 5.1. Now before the court is respondent Ashley Giard's motion requesting e-file access to the CM ECF electronic filing system to file documents with the court over the internet using the case management electronic Electronic case files, CMECF, pursuant to district local rule CIV 5.1, filed on Valentine's Day. Seriously. Counterclaim plaintiff. That's what got me excited. That is going to be absolute lunacy. <laughs> I I mean <laughs> it's 
the attorneys they're they're going to be dismissed almost immediately i i mean it they're going to claim litigation privilege there it, it it's asinine but i i i mean I, i'm guessing she's suing over i'm guessing it's for defamation for them going on television or to journalists or whatever saying yeah our client is not a murderer this lady is a lunatic making stuff up although they i'm sure didn't say lunatic or you know and she's suing for it that that's that's just that's sheer lunacy but i i'm buckled up i'm ready for this train wreck oh boy am i ready for this train wreck and i said i'd come back to it i i'm confident this is going to keep going and i i said i have thoughts so i i have a feeling miss Schofield Professor Schofield, she's probably not excited to be the defendant in a counterclaim. But I, I said this from the start. I, I said this a month ago. My feeling is she entered, she, she was trying for the default judgment because it's better than nothing but i i have a feeling that this is a johnny depp situation where you know johnny said this this isn't about the money this is about getting my story out getting my reputation back showing the world what what the truth is. And I have a feeling that Miss Professor Schofield isn't going to fight against the motion to reopen the case all that vigorously because I have a feeling she wants a decision on the merits as opposed to a default. She wants her, she wants the truth out. I, I mean, in this case, the, the truth is pretty easy. It's, you know, more than likely Brian Koberger is the guilty party and Professor Schofield is, is just a random person that this TikTok psychic selected out of the blue and attacked so it's pretty straightforward but i i'm boy i'm looking forward to miss giard trying to prove in court that she's a psychic I mean, I, I'm I'm looking forward to her trying to get her tarot readings into evidence. I'm looking forward to her producing spirits on the witness stand. I, I mean... You know, that there's 10 years ago, there was the South Park episode. Simpsons did it. Simpsons did it. But but now now we can go South Park did it. Are, are we going to have a suance? Either way, 
I am very excited for this one. Thank you for joining me. Um, please like, share, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I will see you very soon. Bye-bye.